It's Sunday morning, and every decent man and woman is listening to Test Miles with Nick Miles on FM News 101 KXL. Buckle in. Well, it's Sunday morning. It is 10.06 a.m. on FM News 101 KXL. I am Nick Miles, and you're listening to Portland's Automotive Radio Show, Test Miles, locally produced and uh, nationally celebrated. Uh, we were just talking in the studio. I wonder what happens if your electric car gets struck by lightning. Does it just go super fast? It's like Turbo the movie. It would yeah, be it's like a hit of NOS. Pro- pro- we are joking, of course. It's a bad thing for that to happen. We <laughs> should test that just to find out. No, we should. It, yeah, it, it we've would... tested everything. We've ran. You tried to run me over with cars. Why not test this theory? Yeah, I volunteer. Right. As long as you sit in the car and then we put 1,000 volts. That's what it sounded like. He was volunteering. And then we just figure out a way oh, to shoot it with lightning. Yeah, Sean will help me. I'll volunteer to sit in the car. We'll Sean both do it. Oh. My mind is becoming very warped. Our <laughs> team of misfits, Rav Scallions and Ned Duels is here, assembled to bring you the world's most up-to-date automotive news, reviews, and comment. Let me introduce the team quickly. The fire of the show, Brad Boyer, our TV producer, Sean Walker, my pal and professional passenger, Andrew Awesome, and our resident used car salesman, Oli. <laughs> <laughs> so anticlimactic. <laughs> that's a, that's a so-so title. <laughs> is it? We'll work on a new one for next okay. week. All right, it's time for the news quiz where we talk about the stories that have appeared in the news and we see how well-educated our team is and how much automotive news that they've read. It's also an opportunity for the audience to understand some of the major news stories of the week. So who was recently crowned the best sales of all time for a third-row luxury car? Ding, ding, ding. ding. Oli. Um, that's BMW and... No. Wrong. No. Ah. <laughs> Anyone else? I got it. Go on, Andy. Acura. Yes. Yes. They they did it. Uh, since uh, 2001, they've sold almost 700,000 MDXs, more than anyone else in the category. And I believe they've been able to do so because of an impeccable track record for nearly 15 years, winning numerous safety and popularity awards and being an overall awesome car. They are. They're very proud of this fact, the third row seat. However, however, in the last six months, I think BMW has overtaken them. Well, not Did according they? to Acura. Thanks for trying to make me feel better. <laughs> third row, remember. Third row. Uh, what I- what uh, supercar is joining, possibly, allegedly joining the hybrid ding, bandwagon? Ding. I, I, I'm, before anyone even does, it's mine. Sean. Bugatti, which is already the king of supercars with their 1,200 horsepower Veyron. I can't ever say it Verano. right. But they're coming out with a, almost a 1,600, or excuse me, 1,500 horsepower electric car. Or half hi- electric, half hybrid. Uh, so just... would, hybrid would be half electric. Car. Yeah, See, basically. Bugatti's <laughs> just but it's a, a plug-in. <laughs> seven C. What is that? It's fifteen hundred horsepower out of electricity. They've been able to harness the power of lightning. lightning. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, they're trying to top the speed of the last one, which already is top speed is two hundred and sixty-seven miles an hour. That to me, it's it was frightening enough going two hundred miles an hour. Two hundred two, I think, is the fastest I've been. Two hundred sixty. Well, you can only go like eleven minutes at that speed because then you run out of fuel, and that's if your tires even hold up. That's true. That's true. What electric car company is essentially giving away free fuel? I got that one. Okay. So the Nissan Leaf, which really doesn't need any help because it's the top-selling electric car, but they're offering a two-year free public charging capability and i think it's in like 10 15 different markets portland and seattle being included in that so you can go to the nissan dealer or various public places and you get two years free charging you know that is probably the best deal i have seen because there's one thing super annoys me when i go to fred meyer and i'm driving an electric car and i want to plug it in you first of all have to enter your email address your date of birth your blood type everything else just to get the charger to give you electricity i don't mind paying for it but they've got to make it simpler. So I did the math on that. Right. And you were actually paying more than a gallon of gas when you charge up at the Fred Myers. How do you work that out? Because it would, well, unless I have a super account or something, but it was like 7 or $8 for a charge. And I only get 80% of a charge, which is 60 mile range. So it takes me down to 40 miles. Huh. We'll have to ask Banked about that. Banked Halverson yeah. is going to come in later on, and he's, he's the local guru of the, all things The electric. best place to go is Electric Avenue down by Portland State, and that's free charging down there. It is? It's already free charging. Oh, I didn't think it was free charging. Absolutely. Right, I, have to go I had range anxiety, and I couldn't wait to get to Portland State to take care of that. All right. How many electric vehicles are on the planet? I guess I should probably just take that anyway. So I think it's about a half a million vehicles. Yes. Recently, they 
growing rapidly. Um, the fact is that because of one of the things being a cafe standards, more and more car companies doing electric cars to bring their uh, miles per gallon down for their whole fleet. And that means more and more electric cars. Now, there's still, my last calculation was uh, Fiat were losing about $7,000 per vehicle every time they sold one. So it's still a bit of a top-heavy equation, but I'm sure the automobile was in a top-heavy equation when it first started as well. Um, electric cars, oh, did I miss a question? Andrew's telling me I missed a question. Oh, the car company, uh, this car company is the luxury sedan champ. Who is that? Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> this is your BMW, isn't it? This is BMW. Um, over Mercedes and Lexus um, are the other two top competitors. Uh, BMW this year is already over 157,000 sedans, which brings them up 12%. That's the same number percentage-wise for June. 12% puts in about 30,000 cars. Um, Lexus is also up, but the biggest mover in the sedan market is going to be the Audi with the introduction of the new A3. They're up about 23%, you know, just in June since the introduction of that car. Have you guys looked at the A3? I did. And I went out to Duncan. It's beautiful. You know, here's my deal with the A3. I think uh, it really competes against the CLA. Those are the, those are the two big competitors. I mean, the, there's a BMW X1 in there. Uh, as a competitor, but I think the, uh, the Mercedes got all the looks. I think the CLA got the looks, but I prefer the drive and the interior but, of the A3. But with the A3, I can download House of, House of Cards. I can download everything onto my 4G. Because systems. of the Audi Connect system? Yeah, that's so awesome. Is there, is there, an, Audi, is there an A3S? Uh, there will be, yes. Uh, is there, are they and out I now? Think it come, no, it comes out in 2015. Oh, is there, there's an A6S, right? Right, right. Oh, okay, I saw one of those on the road and fell in love. Those you did? Beautiful. Uh, Almost enough to get a license. Out. Yeah. Almost. If you get a driver's Almost. license, you could buy an A3 or an, oh, a, an A3S. Shots S3. fired. Yeah, come on, see? guys. Are we having a go with you? By the way, Oli got his uh, new driver's oh, license this now, week. Come off it. Nick. <laughs> I didn't get the license yet. I just passed the motorcycle endorsement. I was trying to get everything. I already have the boat license. If I get the motorcycle endorsement, then I can go for the CDL. You know, and... some people normally would say congrats. I say quit being greedy. <laughs> you, you have a boat license? I need that. Don't be that. a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> we got a call at Lucky Limousine, which we say yes to everything, but this is one we said, I don't know. Somebody called and said, we have the boat and we have everything. We need somebody to drive our boat for us. Oh, did you do what? it? <laughs> Seriously. They wanted a boat uh, Driver, chauffeur? A boat chauffeur. Did How you, strange is huh. that? Did you do it? I don't, have a, I don't have a license to drive a boat. Oli does. Fake it until I you do make now, it. I know that now. <laughs> I have a boat license. Uh, yeah. How, how's your, do, you have, do you have a chauffeur head that would fit, fit his? No. A chauffeur hat? No way. No one big enough for Oli's head? We've got to be able to hit up uh, I don't some, think you have to show up in your suit. Some value villages or something and get yeah. some kind of fancy Do we have hat. to refer to you as Captain Oli now? I think what we no. do is we put him in Bermuda shorts <laughs> Only and when a you suit board jacket. my ship. <laughs> All right, what's coming up on the show this week? Uh, Mark Shore is going to be on the phone uh, in a few minutes' time. Uh, I experienced something. There is, there's very few wonders that I come across every year, but I came across a wonder last week. I went back to Nissan headquarters uh, in Nashville, Tennessee, and Nissan showed us a paint they're developing where your car just never has to be washed. It's absolutely true. I've seen it with my own eyes. The man from Ultratech, who is the CEO of the company, is going to join us on the phone and tell us all about these new materials on the outside, the inside, and the air filters of your car. He will also tell us when it will be available. We're also going to be talking to uh, Banked Halverson from... Uh, the Northwest Automotive Press Association is having a, an event in town here called Drive Revolution this week, which is the uh, alternative fueled vehicles. The only rule is that it, it cannot be powered by gas alone. Bank is the chairman of the event, and he's going to tell us all about it going on an OMSI this week. And we're also going to tell you what we have been driving this week. So those are the things coming up on the show. Are you guys ready to go? Let's do it. All right, we'll be back in a moment or so. You're listening to Test Miles on FM News 101 KXL. It's a Sunday morning, 10.15. I'm Nick Miles. It's Test Miles on FM News 101. Test Miles, like NASCAR, but with one right turn. TestMiles.com. 
Welcome back to Test Mails on FM News 101 Kicks. Hello, I'm Nick Mails, and if you'd like more Test Mails, please visit our website at testmails.com. Well, what do you do on a weekend morning? Does it, your routine involve washing your car, possibly waxing your car? Well, I could tell you about something that will change your life. If you never want to wash your car again, there is a product for that. It really exists. I've seen it. And joining us on the phone from Ultratech is Mark Shaw, the company uh, CEO. Mark, welcome to the show. Tell me about this new product called EverDry, which you guys have worked on developing. Well, thanks for having me on, Nick. Um, Ultra EverDry is a super hydrophobic and oleophobic spray-on coating that has been used now for a little over a year in the industrial market, and we're uh, bringing it to the automotive market as a potential option for coating your car to make it uh, basically stay dry and clean uh, and make it self-cleaning at the same time. So if you throw something like mud or, uh, or water or rain onto the car, what, is, what happens to it? There's a, the, the way the technology works, um, a barrier is created both by surface energy being lower than the water or the mud. And a, instead of a, everyone would think it's going to have a really slick and smooth finish, but it actually has a bit of a matte finish, and it has peaks and valleys, and those um, uh, water droplets or mud or whatever will actually ride on top of these peaks, trapping air underneath it, and it rides in a layer of air over those peaks off, um, looking more or less like mercury instead of what you would um, usually see water sheet off. It beads up and rolls off like mercury. I like it because you're using the words like hydrophobic, so it, it, it sounds evil. So it, it's like you're, you're making it like, you know, you're, you're, you're making a product that water's afraid of. And I can 100% get behind that. <laughs> That's perfect. Uh, we, you know, I was in Nashville, obviously, with you, Mark, last week, and we, we had a demonstration of this product. One, one of the fun parts is it's not really just water, but, but you actually pour Hershey's chocolate syrup onto a car to demonstrate it. Right, yeah. You never know when you're going to hit a really bad uh, storm with uh, Hershey's chocolate syrup coming down. Is that a bad but, storm uh, or a good storm? <laughs> that's right. I'd be, my face would be in a puddle, I'm sure. Um, no, it, it just shows the, the, um, the scope of uh, it can handle a whole variety of food products. Uh, it can handle concrete, um, uh, dust and debris. We're, we're going to be doing some tests to see how it does with love bugs. So it's got a... Uh, a variety and a breadth of, of um, things that it can repel. Now let's talk a, a little bit about the real-world application of this. How close are we to seeing this product actually on, on production vehicles? I, I, don't, I think it will become an aftermarket product initially, and I would say that it's probably going to be the soonest would be late 2015. Um, we have to do a lot more um, durability testing, um, wind abrasion testing, things along those lines, before we um, would want uh, anyone to invest any dollars on their, their vehicle. So currently, you, how, how is it applied? Does it have to be applied in a special shop? How does that work? Uh, it can be applied. Um, it, it can only be purchased at, uh, by uh, industrial or cons uh, commercial entities. It can't be applied by consumers. You need to wear a respirator and, and goggles and gloves. So um, any commercial outfit could spray it on as it would spray paint your car. Um, it's just a two-step process. You spray in a bottom coat, let it dry for a half hour. Spray in a top coat, let it dry for a half hour, and, uh, and you're done. I have to tell you that we, uh, we, we did a news story on this for Fox uh, this week, which we shall air next week. And uh, Sean and I, we headed out to a car wash just to get some footage and to stand in front of it. And, of course, the first thing that happened was the guys were like, hey, what are you guys using? Got TV cameras? What's going on? We, we explained to them. <laughs> and within seconds, the manager asking us to leave because he didn't want any <laughs> negative stories about his car wash being on the air. Um, he was like, no, no, we don't want to be on the air about a company that's, that's, that's maybe hurting our industry. There are 113,000 employees of car washes in the United States. It's a $5.8 billion business. But the, the positive side is there are 38 gallons of water lost from every car that's washed uh, is, is irretrievable. So suddenly there's a really good ecological side to this. And is that why you guys developed the, pro the project, Mark? Well, we, we developed, um, we got involved in the development and, and the marketing of Ultra Everdry um, because, quite frankly, we were enamored with it. And we saw nanotechnology, which is some of its basis, as being um, things that we wanted to get involved with as a company and bring those to the market. 
Um, but there, our original core business is the environmental market. So we've developed like 400 products in that area. So the, the very reason I got started, I started my first business at age 23, was to save the world from toxic waste and build a drum that would never leak. So that kind of is kind of the why behind our company. We're, we're always trying to come out with things that will um, make business, people's lives, and the environment better. And so this just kind of follows that path. So I would think that there are some great industrial applications uh, as simple as maybe a fire truck would save firemen and firefighters a ton of time having to clean their vehicles up, spend more time resting and getting ready to fight fires. Yeah, um, that's true. And we're, we're getting uh, people like concrete trucks are putting it on the truck so that the concrete um, by, uh, splatter doesn't go on the paint with a 12 pH of concrete. It actually eats the paint away. Um, we're finding people putting it on the bottoms of, of cars and vehicles, and it's actually enjoying some... Uh, uh, the first big place for vehicles has been uh, off-road. Uh, a lot of people are putting on the underside of their four-wheelers and underside of their four-wheel drive trucks, and they're not. Um, uh, when at the end of the day, it's clean. They don't have to uh, um, be carrying around 75 pounds of mud. We need an application for this for Mudfest for our off-road competition for yeah, the we, Northwest Press Group. Yeah, we do. We do that. That would be great to spray our cars for Mudfest. Uh, Mark, I, I would love to do some projects with you later in the year. If people want to find out more about uh, your product from Ever, uh, Ultratech and the uh, EverDry product. How do they find out more? Uh, they can go to um, uh, spillcontainment.com. It's S, P as in Paul, I-L-L, containment.com, and look up EverDry, or they can go to um, www.ultraeverdry.com. And you, you guys have also uh, working on some other interesting uh, products. Tell me quickly about the interior material or the material you've, uh, you've got going and also the air scrubber. Yes. Um, in addition to keeping the outside of the car clean, we have a technology called Ultra Ever Shield, which is a fabric treatment when it's applied to fabrics. Um, you, know, you can pour red wine on it, it rolls off. You can pour chocolate syrup on it, it rolls off. It won't stain, won't get wet. Um, and it's self-cleaning, and that could be used in car seats and the hood headliners and the carpeting. And then we also have a way to keep the air clean in the cars using, again, nanotechnology. Um, this actually can remove the odors, not just cover them up with a flowery scent. So you can throw those little evergreen trees on your mirror goodbye, and we can embed this into the carpeting, headliners, fabric, and even the air filters of the car. Perfect. I'm thinking an application for 12-year-old uh, for boys' uh, trousers as well. That might be a really good idea. <laughs> You've got lots of great ideas there, Mark. Mark Shaw from uh, Ultratech, thank you so much for joining us. And I'm sure we're going to be talking to you about uh, some of these products later on in the year. Uh, you have yourself a good day. You're listening to Tess Miles on FM News 101 KXL. I'm Nick Miles. Throw it in neutral and coast in with testmiles.com. Favorite us, tweet us, friend us, love us, all at testmiles.com. 10.35 on a Sunday morning. Uh, this is Test Miles in FM News 101. If, by the way, if you want to see some footage of that uh, Ever, Ever Tech or Ever Dry Ultra Tech product, which keeps your car clean and you never have to wash it again, go to testmiles.com. You'll see our news report up there, which will air on a number of stations next week. All right, last year, the Northwest Automotive Press Association started a new event in Poland. It was called Drive Revolution. The event, it's a loose competition. Um, the only rule is, as I understand it, is that cars cannot be powered by gasoline alone which is a fancy way of saying it's a green car competition. The event is at OMSI this coming Thursday, and here to tell us all about the event is the chairperson and uh, chief bottle washer for uh, this year's dry, uh, Drive Revolution. Recycled bottles. Ba banked Halverson. <laughs> banked, you are also, uh, you work for, your full-time job is you work for Car Connection, is that right? Uh, that, well, I work for High Gear Media. Uh, we're a company out of Palo Alto, California, and I'm fortunate enough to work out of Portland. 
And uh, one of our sites, one of our main sites, is Green Car Reports. So, and, and they're always quoted in TV commercials. I always hear Toyota commercials says, Green Car Reports says it's one of the best cars, and you know, that sort of thing. So you guys sort of evaluate on Green Car Reports, evaluate a lot of the green vehicles. Tell me a little bit about Drive Revolution and, and the idea behind it. Yeah, well, Drive Revolution is something that we started uh, last year, and it's something that's, that's been in our minds for, for a number of years. Uh, and, and we've seen over the past years, past several years, the number of cars that just offer um, kind of intimidating, uh, intimidatingly complex powertrains um, increase. And, you know, you pop the hood under some of these hybrids and, and some of these extended range uh, electric cars, and, and you wonder, how does this thing go? You know, what's, what's its selling point? And, and oftentimes, you know, the, the salesman can't even, you know, can't necessarily give you a good idea of, of what's going on. Um, and so we as media need to do a better, a better job explaining to, uh, to consumers what does this car do, what's its advantage, how is it saving energy and saving the world, um, and, and why should you pay, you know, most of these cars cost more money, so why should you be paying more money for them? Right, because it's um, about three to seven thousand dollars more than some. Of, some of them don't have equivalents, like the Nissan Leaf doesn't have an equivalent necessarily. But but things like the Fiat 500 electric does have a gasoline equivalent, and the price difference can be three to seven thousand. So those things can be explained. That's right, and so and so they they cost more in terms of sticker price, and so you have to ask you have to ask the question: Well, do they pay off over the long run? And if they don't pay off pay off over the long run, then you know, what kind of other advantages can they bring to the table? And a lot of these models are actually more fun to drive than their gasoline counterparts. Um, for example, this past week I got a, I got a, a preview drive in, in Audi's uh, A3 e-tron, which comes out next year, and um, I found that it was more fun to drive than the, the, the plain gasoline Audi A3. And this is a, a basically an, a, an electric motor fitted to uh, kind of like kind of like a Chevy Volt you know you can drive for 30 35 miles on electric electric power alone and uh, then it just functions as a hybrid after that um, explaining to people how it all works though that's the challenge so what are some of the vehicles that you're gonna have to have at drive revolution and it's, it's an OMSI on Thursday it's not a public event right but but what are some of the vehicles that will be there for the journalists to drive so we're gonna have basically all sorts of what we would consider, you know, green cars or green vehicles. Anything that's not gasoline power does only. That does that include diesels? Yeah, it includes diesels. We're, we're even going to have a Ram 1500 Eco Diesel. That's uh, Ram, uh, Ram Truck's new uh, light duty diesel pickup. It, you know, don't think Cummins. Think something that's going to get possibly upper 20s on the highway, um, you know, comfortably. Uh, and, and the interesting fact is that actually uh, Test Miles is a show where we're taking on a long-term diesel truck. So we're going to take that 1500 Eco Diesel. We're going to try it over six months to see if it actually makes sense, mm -hmm. which is kind of interesting. So is that the only diesel that's going to be there? You're going to have other diesels? So no, we're going to have the the Golf, the 2015 VW Golf TDI, Excellent. and uh, that's we're going to have that with a manual transmission. And and that I've I've actually driven that. It's a lot of fun to drive. Um, I uh, took it, you know, didn't didn't take it that easy going out to the coast and back, and averaged 49 miles per gallon. Wow, uh, so that's crazy <laughs> and, and fun to drive. Yeah, it's a and it's a blast to drive. Um, now there and, seems to be a lot of diesel, a lot of hybrids. What about the electrics? And and is there any natural gases? Because I think there's only one commercial natural gas vehicle. That's the Honda Civic, right? Yeah, and so um, you know this area isn't great for natural gas. Um, of 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 all things green that this area is good for, that's just not one of it. We 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 have one, from what I understand, one operational natural gas station still in in the Portland metro area. Um, but Honda's bringing its Civic natural gas, and natural gas will make sense for a lot of other regions of the country. And 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 the media members for our group have nat national reach. You know, we'll have uh, you know, a wide range of of reporters there ranging from green tech people to um, you know correspondents for the major newspapers and and some car magazines and and uh, TV and radio
Right, so. and I think Portland, the city of Portland, if and I'll have to check this out, but they recently just granted natural gas licenses to a bunch of places. So I think the opportunity is there could be new natural gas stations coming, and we'll check that out and get you some results. What about those those electric vehicles? Are we going to see anything that we haven't seen before in the region? And so, um, you know, we'll we'll have we'll definitely have some interesting electric cars out there. One of one of the most interesting is the Volkswagen e Golf. Uh, funny. Funny thing is, um, you know, the, the German automakers um, placed all of their money on on diesels a few years ago, and more recently they've they've kind of uh, there's been a concession where they've realized, hey, we've got to we've got to think about electric cars and, and hybrids too. Um, VW is really kind of has really gone all the way with um, this e Golf, which is which is only electric, uh, and so we're going to have. Uh, the e-golf right next to the golf TDI and be able to uh, feel essentially two different flavors of, of green car, um, both possibly more fun to drive than just the standard base golf uh, and, and be able to feel that difference and maybe crunch some of the numbers as to, you know, how it would pan out financially or what, what money you'd save. We're going to get the Fiat 500e out there again. That was the and, winner last year. Right? Yeah, and that was by by far the winner last year when we tallied those votes. It was it you know, we we had some some close runners up, but but by a long shot that was the winner. And I think among most people in our industry who just who cover cars in general or green cars, uh, the the five will. We, we all agree that the 500e is, is the most fun to drive. I it, will tell you that out of, definitely out of how they look and feel and, uh, and the fashion start, sense, and it's clearly so much better. One of the problems with one of these electric cars is quite often they're made to be kind of dull and, and they sort of, they're, they're worse versions. Of, I, I <laughs> followed a Honda Insight the other day and it just reminded me, okay, they don't have to be ugly. I mean, it seemed like, it seemed like a requirement early on. A Honda do such a good job with so much. It's just such a shame about the insight. Now, is there going to be anything fancy, ELR, Cadillac ELR, or something yeah, like that? Yeah, so 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 we're gonna we're going to have um, some premium cars out there too. The Cadillac ELR, uh, the Lexus CT200H, which is their, um, you know, that that model probably hasn't re hasn't received as much respect or attention as it deserves. It's kind of it's kind of the the um, sleeker, more uh, prettier looking hatchback version of the Prius. Only the tuning is completely different. It's it it feels a lot more sporty. Um, it, it 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 hasn't quite um, resonated with with shoppers. I guess yeah, you'd say. Yeah, it, it is a nicer car, and I've driven it. And I think it it does a good job. Now, so Drive Revolution comes this Thursday. It'll be at OMSI for the members of the press and. You'll be able to see a lot of the articles that rise out of that, television, radio, newspaper, online. All of those will come in the next week or so. Banks, stick around. We're going to have you stay with us for the last segment of the show. Uh, you're listening to Tess Miles on FM News 101. When we come back, we'll talk about what we've been driving. We'll find a little more out about Drive Revolution. I'm Nick Miles. It's Test Miles on FM News 101. Test Miles, like NASCAR, but with one right turn. Testmiles.com. Uh, we're going to get to more about talking to you about Drive Revolution and Bank Halverson in a moment or so. Um, we'll talk about the public days, which come up after the media days. Uh, Andy, what cars did you share out from the uh, the pool this week? Well, Nick, uh, double dipper. You got a Dodge Durango, <clears throat> the Kia Optima Hybrid. Sean got the Hyundai Elantra Coupe, and Mr. Brad got the Mazda Miata. It's funny, it is coupe if you come from Europe, but it's coupe if you come from North America. The Kia Optima Hybrid, uh, a really nice basic car. Uh, evaluated this car, very impressed with the features on it. 2014 is definitely one of my top picks. Lots of standard and optional features uh, for the money. 
a nice big cabin, easy use of controls, it's comfortable seating. Uh, the, the things I don't necessarily like about it is tight rear headroom, low fuel economy on the higher grade classes, and it has an interesting braking response in the hybrid version. 2.4 liter in line four, 192 horsepower, six speed auto, front wheel drive. About 34 miles a gallon is what I was getting uh, on the highway. Competes with the uh, Sonata Hybrid, the Accord Hybrid, the Camry Hybrid. Uh, it comes in that LX trim level. I do love their Uvo e-services that they have in this car and the uh, eight-way power adjustable seat. I will tell you that it is fairly easy to maneuver. It's a little firm over speed bumps. Starting price to $25,995. This is one of the only cars you'll get this out of me on. 10 out of 10 score. It, it is definitely one of my favorite cars. Uh, Dodge Durango, this was a very welcome change for them. Uh, still one of my top choices. I'm saying it's the best full-size SUV in the non-luxury market. Uh, thanks to a welcoming interior and on really nice highway manners, it's a great choice for an SUV. Easy to maneuver, a high-quality interior, which is something Dodge and the, the parent company Chrysler has failed to do over many years, but really high quality now. V8 power, amazing in the RT version. 3.6 V6, 5.7 V8, 350 horsepower in that V8. Eight-speed transmission, all-wheel drive. 23 on the highway. Competes with the Highlander, the Pilot, the Pathfinder, the Explorer. It has a whole bunch of trim levels in this. STX, STX Plus, Limited, RT, which is what we drove, and the Citadel. Uh, their Uconnect system is really nice. Their, their infotainment system, probably one of the best. Uh, very easy to drive. 29995 starting price. Uh, the one we test is in the mid-40s. Again, 10 out of 10. I just think this car is absolutely awesome. Brad? I had a, a substantial departure from any of that. I had the Mazda Miata. <laughs> and now the Miata means reward or prize, and it depends on the day that you have it. If it's rainy... It's not such a prize for a bigger guy. But this is the 25th anniversary of the Miata. It debuted at the Chicago Auto Show, and it's really the last one standing. If you think about all the cars that came before it in that little convertible model, I mean, all the way down to the Solstice and even the Crossfire, there's nothing left. So, But it's fun, cute, nimble, but the bad for me, it's small, and it's small, and it's small. <laughs> but one engine level, it's the 2.44 liter and 167 horsepower, which is plenty for what it does. Rear-wheel drive, 22 and 28 in the MPG on that. Four different trim levels. Very low tech, I thought, on the inside. So there wasn't a lot of room for a lot of tech on that. Starting price? Starting price is 24-7, goes up to about 32,000. So rainy day of five, sunny day, 10. Yeah. And you'll find me out of fans will not, you know, they'll love it regardless of either. Sean? Had the Honda Elantra Coupe. Comes in three trim levels. There's a GT hatchback, a sedan, but I wanted the sexy coupe. The interior is really nice. Um, it's a great car. It's fun to drive. The My only lows about it, it's a little underpowered going through some of the curves, but it still handles really nicely. Has a two-liter GDI engine, 173 horsepower, Gets average around 28 miles a gallon. Starting price is 19,000. The test drive, the one I was test driving was 24,700, and I'm going to give it a seven out, 7.5. Just small back seat and the underpowering going through the mountains is not what I wanted. But a good city car, and I think it's it's particularly designed. Oh yeah, for, it's for great the for the city, and it just made me getting out of the Genesis. I can't wait for the Genesis Coupe. That's going to be my ultimate car right now. <laughs> it is excellent. All right, Banks, so with Drive Revolution coming up on Thursday, there is a public component to this. That's right. Uh, uh, Saturday the 19th, um, this next Saturday, at OMSI from 10 to, 10 to 5, rather, um, there's a big public day at OMSI, and um, it's, it's also called Drive Revolution. We conceived these events together last year uh, as, as having uh, a media day on Thursday. That's what we've been talking about so far. And then on Saturday, uh, there's a public event. Um, this is not just geekery. This is the sort of thing you can bring your entire family to, even if they're, if they're not car people or car guys. Uh, we've got uh, bikes, electric bikes, um, public transport exhibits, uh, all kinds of things. You know, insurance companies are going to be out there talking about what it costs to insure uh, electric cars and green cars. We're going to have some some rather exotic kind of hobbyist type electric cars. I think we're going to have an, a, an electric drag car on display. 
uh, and uh, car sharing companies are going to be out there, like Car2Go, uh, Zipcar. Uh, we'll have energy companies talking about what it costs uh, to, to plug in at home. Uh, and uh, we're even going to have a, uh, an emergency preparedness um, cargo bike exhibit. So really a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff out there, a lot of um, things to think about alongside looking at, at these, these um, green cars and, and, and future technology. It's really sort of more of a transportation uh, symporium, really, where people can come and look at uh, different ways that you can move from A to B. And I think the, uh, last year they had involvement from trains and, and especially the bicycle community, which is actually massive here, isn't it? That's right. And, and you can drive uh, at least several of these vehicles that we've been talking about today. That's excellent. Bank, thanks so much. You can see Bank stuff at the Green Car uh, Reports and right. also at Car Connection and um, Motor Authority sometimes uh, if you do some articles for them, right? That's right. Ba Bank working for High Gear Media, and these events will take place for the public on Saturday the 19th. This is Tess Miles and FM News 101. Next week, another packed show. Uh, this week in town, uh, Chrysler... Uh, Dodge vehicles will be in town. The Dodge brand new Challenger and that Hellcat is going to be launched in Portland. We're all going to get to drive that on PIR this week. We'll report about that next week. Plus, loads more on next week's show. Testmiles.com is where you'll find all of what we talked about today and you'll be able to see that ever dry paint where you'll never have to wash your car again. Please join us there for the rest of the week. We'll be back next week. You're listening to FM News 101 KXL. This is Tess Miles and I'm Nick Miles. Throw it in neutral and coast in with testmiles.com.